I hope it will remain safe and live. Ma'am, we are live. Good evening. Welcome to iFocus Lecture 50. We have successfully completed half century. Thank you all students for your participation. Today we have Dr. Praveen Vashish, who is currently the Professor and Head of Community of Thilmanji Department at RP Center Ames. He heads many community outreach programs and has a major role in strengthening epidemiological research and training in the field of community eye care. He's a principal investigator for National Blindness Survey over the years and took an active move to redefine certain categorizations. He will be talking to us today on corneal blindness in India. Welcome, sir, and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Harika. I would like to share my slides. Hope my slides are visible now. Yes, sir. Yeah. So good evening, everyone. <clears throat> so today the topic which I'll be presenting is the corneal blindness in India. I'm thankful to uh, this iFocus Growth Center for Sight for giving me opportunity to present this thing. I'm currently professor and head of community of ophthalmology as well as uh, vice president of Vision 2020 Right to Sight India. And <clears throat> Yeah, just to share about the global burden of uh, blindness and specifically the corneal blindness. We know that uh, it is estimated that currently there are 36 million blind people and there are another 217 million visually impaired people that is called MSVI, moderate social visual impairment. When you talk internationally, when you talk visual impairment, it means blindness plus MSVI that is known as visual impairment. So 253 visually impaired people globally at present. And uh, though the leading cause of blindness is cataract and leading cause of visual impairment is, is, is uncorrected refractive error. But when you talk about corneal blindness and corneal opacity, then it is divided into two, mainly two groups. One is the trichometer's corneal opacity and second is the nometer's corneal opacity is, is nearly around... 1.6% uh, that include blindness and visual impairment. Blindness component proportion is higher. It is 3.46% of overall blindness and just 1.29% of moderate severe visual impairment. <clears throat> Whereas trachoma is reducing and as far as blindness is concerned, it is nearly 1% of the total blindness. And for MSVI, it is nearly 0.6% of total MSVI. So overall visual impairment due to trachoma is 0.8%. As far as India is concerned, as per new, a national program for control, control of blindness, uh, they, this is a newsletter which was there in 2012. According to them, the number of bilateral corneal blind people in India are around 1.1 to 1.2 million. And uh, that include nearly this, uh, 5 to 6 million people who are actually unilateral corneal in, involvement. You know, unilateral corneal involvement is not blindness. The actual definition of blindness is when the visual equity is less than 3 by 60 in the better eye. But at this time, 2012, the definition was less than 6 by 60 in the better eye. The annual incidence of uh, uh, corneal cases uh, in our country was estimated as around 50,000 cases. And uh, <clears throat> nearly 1 lakh uh, annual requirement of keratoplasty is there. And for that, we require nearly 2 lakh corneas every year. And to achieve this thing, it is estimated that we require uh, around 1,000 cornea surgeons in our country uh, at a given point of time. <clears throat> as far as corneal blindness in India is concerned, if you see the trends in 1986-89 survey, which was, which was uh, the WHO NPCB survey, and as per that survey, the proportion of blindness due to corneal opacity was 1.52% of the total blindness. <clears throat> in 2001, 1999 to 2001, another survey was conducted that was conducted in 50 plus population. And as per that survey, proportion of blindness due to corneal causes was just 0.9%. In fact, all these times, cataract was the leading cause, but less than 1% of blindness was due to corneal causes. So it was assumed that 
cornea is not a major burden in our country. But in 2007, <clears throat> what we found that in national survey, they increased to 3.6% of total blindness. That was something nearly four times increase in, in, in proportion of coronary blindness as compared to the total blindness. Recently, we have finished with this survey that is National Blindness and Visual, Visual Impairment Survey, which was conducted from 2015 to 2019. But last year on World Side Day, the report was released by Health Minister. It is not yet published, so it is a new information, probably most of you. This is the report which you can um, take from RP Center in time. As per this survey, you can see that though the cataract is a leading cause of blindness, but proportion of blindness due to non-trichometrous corneal opacity, it has increased to 7.4%. So 0.9% in 2001, 3.6% in 2007, and 7.4% of blindness due to corneal opacity in 2019. Use increase. Right? And beside this, the trichometrous corneal opacity is just 0.8% of overall blindness, which is much lesser compared to non-trichometrous causes. What I want to share is that overall blindness and visual impairment <clears throat> in our country has significantly reduced, like pre prevalence of blindness from 0.68% to 0.36%, and overall visual impairment from 5.3% to 2.55%. But the proportion of corneal blindness has increased significantly. <clears throat> and the causes, as, as I mentioned, so your voice uh, is not and clear, the blindness, and it was just 0.9% here in 2001. So it's showing my internet connection is unstable. Yes, sir. Your yeah. voice is not clear, sir. So what should I do? Should I try for some other connection? Uh, no, sir. Give it like 5-10 seconds. It will be fine. I hope so. I think you can go ahead, I'm sir. I'm just trying it. I can go ahead, huh? Yes. Okay. So, beside this <clears throat> survey in 50 plus population, we also conducted survey in 0 to 49 age group and a sample size of 18,000 all the country was conducted in six, six, six districts. And surprisingly, the proportion of corneal blindness, no, non trichometrous corneal blind, opacity uh, in 0 to 49 age group, it was 37.5% of blindness, nearly more than one third of blindness was due to corneal causes, you can understand, though it is, it is increased to 7.4% proportion in, in 50 plus age group, but in younger population, the proportion of corneal blindness is much, much higher compared to the older age group. If you want to see the finding of this survey, you can log on to this www.indiavisionatlas and pcb.aims.edu and you can find see the, all the findings of this national blindness survey. <clears throat> Now, I would like to share that these are the some community-based studies in 50-plus age group, which were conducted in our country way back from 2001 to 2010. And uh, as per these studies, you can see the prevalence or our prevalence of corneal blindness in our country was ranging from 0.08% to 1.75%. And if we see it as a proportion of oral blindness, that's range from 0.9%, which was there in National Blindness Survey, to nearly 14.7% <coughs> in another survey. And we did a meta-analysis of, of all these studies. It was conducted by Dr. Nupur Gupta, who was also a PhD student for us. And now he, she's associate professor in RP Center in Cornea. And as per this uh, <coughs> meta-analysis, what we got that the oral prevalence of corneal blindness where blindness was defined as presenting visual equity less than 6 by 60 in India, in 50 plus population, it was 0.45%, with the confidence interval of 0.27 to 0.64%. And then as per this core study, which, which was done by Dr. Nupur Gupta, its core stand for corneal opacity rural epidemiology study, and we did in a sample of 
nearly 13000 chiral prevalence of corneal opacity was 0.55% which include bilateral corneal opacity in 0.12% as a prevalence and unilateral was 0.45% and among the causes of blindness as per this study see we see oral corneal opacity the common causes were pterygium and the traumatic corneal opacity and infectious keratitis whereas bilateral blindness it is been mainly because of the 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 bullous keratopathy whether the fakic or pseudo fakic or corneal dystrophy with and degenerations and also because of trachoma whereas unilateral blindness was mainly because of trauma and and infections <clears throat> this is so your voice is not audible sir impairment and what i want major cause of blindness hello yes sir you are not audible sir trying to shift for to another that would be great sir can you hear me now am i audible yes sir yes sir you are yeah. audible then it is fine i have shifted to another <clears throat> source now so okay, in this slide uh, in 1990s the major cause of childhood visual impairment was the corneal blindness but now it is mainly shifted to whole globe or retinal causes this is a shift from the for, for causes of visual impairment among children uh, in in last 20 years vitamin a deficiency yes it is it was an important cause of blindness among children and uh, a night blindness if it is you know the public health uh, burden problem is is considered when the prevalence of night blindness is more than 1% in a community and uh, it was around 0.9% in preschool children this is a global data and 7.8% among pregnant women the other criteria of judging these vitamin a deficiency as uh, as a public health problem is the serum retinol concentration if it is less than 0.7% in more than 20% of the population it is taken as public health problem you can see that this prevalence of uh, low serum retinol level was 33.3% in preschool ch children and was 15.3% in pregnant women so what who estimates that way back in around 10 15 year ago in 2005 that africa and southeast asia where india is a part is is a area where vitamin a is still existing as a public health problem if you take the biotin spot if the prevalence of biotin spot is more than 0.5% it is taken as public health problem and these two studies were conducted in 2013 this shows that the prevalence of biotin spot is around 0.8% or 0.9% that means definitely more than 0.5% so we assume that vitamin a deficiency is still a public health problem am i audible uh, dr rolika so yes sir you are very much audible it's perfect thank you, thank you. so now we'll go what are the how we can prevent corneal blindness so it include primary prevention secondary prevention and tertiary prevention primary prevention is before the occurrence of the blindness or disease so one is the measles vaccination the measles vaccination is is now nowadays two doses are given one at uh, uh, measles at 9 month of age another dose as part of mmr at 15 to 18 month of age the second is vitamin a prophylaxis probably one uh, one method of prevention which has been used in our country and since 2006 uh, we are uh, using a strategy of nine doses of vitamin a prophylaxis start with the at 9 month of age with the measles vaccination and then every six second dose is given at one and a half year of age then then after every six month till five year of age total nine doses uh, in our country and just remember they are given to each and every child whether they have deficiency or not that's why it's called prophylaxis and uh, and uh, you know the current coverage uh, is uh, is around 60% in our country but the government of india is still going with the with the policy that the vitamin a prophylaxis should continued in case of child is having vitamin a deficiency then it is not prophylaxis then we call it as treatment and there it is three dose schedule day 1 day 2 
और डे जीरो डे वन एंड डे फोर्टीन थ्री डोजेज सेम विटामिन ए विच इज टू लैक यूनिट uh if if the age is more than 1 year of age if age is less than 1 year of age it is 1 lakh unit 1 lakh unit is equivalent to 1 ml then perinatal care and essential newborn care is a strategy for prevention of ophthalmia neonatorium for trachoma it is basically improve environment hygiene in in form of providing water and sanitation and and sanitary latrines this these are the key for trachoma uh, elimination then safe practices uh, basically are need for prevention of ocular trauma as i discussed trachoma is one of the leading cause of unilateral <clears throat> corneal opacity and then prevention of uh, use of harmful traditional eye medications especially steroid etc there's another strategy for prevention of corneal blindness as for the secondary prevention is concerned it is basically treatment of ulcers and with the different antibiotics are given in fact some uh, antibiotics are given as prophylaxis at community level prophylaxis doses are given such experiments are going in nepal in in up in sita pur district of india in bhutan myanmar and what they have shown is that if you give prophylactic anti antibiotics then you can reduce the incidence of ulcer up to 80% 80% as a tertiary prevention the strategy is basically eye banking and keratoplasty and uh, probably you know that in 1944 the first time the first eye bank was started in new york and in 61 it was eye bank association in america was started so what is eye bank eye bank are the institutions which are responsible for collecting evaluation and preservation of donor corneas <clears throat> they are responsible to distribute the corneal tissues in an equitable manner for keratoplasty and they ensure safe transportation of tissues to the keratoplasty centers they enable research in related, related to the cornea which is uh, um, grafting everything and beside all these things it is the public awareness on eye donations which has been uh, done by these eye banks <coughs> eye bank in india the first eye bank was started in by R R I U chennai in 1945 i bank association of india was uh, like initiated in 1989 overall 720 i banks are listed with national program for control of blindness but among them only 149 are active and even among them only 10 i banks are there which will collecting or transplanting more than 1000 corneas in one year so that means we need to improve i bank in a way that more and more cornea should be collected per i bank national program for blindness and visual impairment they are basically supporting i banks and i donation centers and in case any ngo they want to start a new by i bank they they support with the 40 lakh rupees and for i donation center it is 1 lakh rupees they are involved in supporting training of eye surgeons uh, for for keratoplasty and they also support hospital cornea retrieval program <clears throat> so as i mentioned is 40 lakh rupees for standing eye bank and 1 lakh rupees for eye donation centers beside this they also give recurrent uh, grants uh, that is 15000 rupees if you want to appoint one eye donation counselor or a contractual basis worker uh, in eye bank and uh, if they are collecting pair of eye then 2000 rupees are given to eye bank and uh, which involve processing also if it is only collection of uh, corneas then 1000 rupees are given per pair of eye for eye donation centers and uh, beside this the government of india and pcb they also support for corneal transplantation and for each keratoplasty they pay rupees 7500 to all the registered ngo under under the program how many corneas are collected every year in a country you can see since 2009 we were collecting around 50000 corneas which was increased to around 65000 in 2016 the last year data showed that we collected 68409 corneas against a target of 55000 corneas as a critical review i must say that the target of 50 55000 is too low as <coughs> sorry as um, even before we had a target in 2012 we had a, uh, we said we need 1 lakh corneas per year 
So target of keeping just 55,000 cornea is too low. And after this 2009 surveys, as, as, as you can see, the proportion of corneal blindness has increased significantly. So probably the number of cornea requirement is much higher compared to what we are having under the national program at this stage. And beside this, what we understand is hardly 40% of the corneas which have been collected, they actually, they are leading to success. The, the, and the quality visual reason is, is, is observed in are hardly 40% of uh, keratoplasties. There may be various reasons for that, but we need to improve, improve that. Hospital coordinated program is probably one strategy which government of India is feel that it is important. And currently it is a strategy which has been strengthened by national program of control of blindness. And uh, what we do here is we do the active counseling of the relative in hospitals after death. So basically all the hospitals which are attached to the, uh, the eye departments, there the, the one grief counselor is posted and he's responsible to, to meet the, the family members. He shared their grief and then he prepared them to take a, a positive steps towards eye donation on behalf of their, their the disease uh, family members. And uh, that facilitated the eye donation. The advantage of a hospital coordinator program, in fact, the strategy was started in, uh, by LV Prasad. The key, uh, the factors which lead to the advantage as compared to the household collection is uh, you have easy accessibility to the potential donors. You are, uh, get, you can actually take the medical history properly from the relative uh, at that time. Uh, you usually get younger donors through HCRP and uh, uh, you know, reduction of death to coronary retrieval time is low. Like you're reaching within, uh, say, one hour of the death of the, the patient. So in, when you have to go home, it takes more time. Here it takes less time. And even the cost is less. So all these factors is basically they are now giving favor to hospital coronary retrieval program and to improve both cornea collection and utilization rate in eye banks. This is uh, one slide which shows the utilization of uh, collected corneas. So this is this is National Eye Bank that is an RP center versus All India Collections. Uh, what I want to share is that the utilization in National Eye Bank is nearly 70 to 80 percent utilization of cornea is there. Whereas if we see the data of the entire country, the utilization is around 35 to 40 percent only. <clears throat> So what we pay for that, how we can improve this cornea utilization, the strategy is that we should target young donors. We should reduce the time for collection of corneas. And uh, we should try to use better medias for uh, cornea, that is, uh, which, which will be long-term preservation medias, uh, better trained surgeons, and uh, even in fact, if we need to increase the number, a component corneal surgery is probably advisable uh, if we want to do more and more keratoplasty surgeries. Now, National Eye Donation Fortnight, uh, I hope people know that this is celebrated every year from 25th August to 8th of September every year. And uh, uh, it is since 1985. It was actually started when Dr. Uh, Rajiv Gandhi, our prime minister, he pledged during his birthday on 25th August 1985. And since then it has been celebrated. And it is basically a campaign which aims to create mass public awareness and to pledge their eyes for donation after, after death. So <clears throat> and for eye banking related, any query, any issues, in fact, the National Program for Control of Blindness, they've just released this booklet that is Standard of Eye Banking in India, 2020. I request all of you to go through these um, guidelines for standards and probably you get everything related to eye banking which is being which is being actually uh, facilitated by the uh, national program for control of blindness <clears throat> you know some regulation uh, act etc the the previous act was the transplantation of human organ act that is thoa which was in 1994 and the rules <clears throat> which laid in 1994 were the transplantation of human organ rules, which were actually amended in 2011. 
Now they called Transplantation of Human Organs Amendment Act 2011. <coughs> Sorry. And Transplantation of Human Organ and Tissue Rules 2014. So uh, just remember this is NOTA now, National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization. And I, what I want to share is that this, this NOTA is not only for eye uh, donation, it is for all kind of tissue and organ donations, uh, any part of the body. And this is uh, basically is part of uh, Director General of Health and Services, Minister of Health and Family Welfare. And it has two divisions. One is National Human Organ and Tissue Removal and Storage Network, which is responsible for network for procurement, allocation, and distribution of organ and tissues. Whereas another is the National Biometric Center, Biomaterial Center. And it is basically to establish national level tissue bank to fulfill the demand of tissue transplantation, including activities for procurement, storage, and fulfill distribution of biomaterials. <clears throat> for eye care, you must know that the person who is authorized to donate eye is the, the near relative of the diseased person uh, or the person who is lawfully in possession of the body of the diseased donor. And there should be two witnesses uh, along with him. But for medical legal cases, must remember the doctors, the medical officers, they must request the station house officer to facilitate timely retrieval of organs or tissues from the donor. And a copy of the same should also go to the designated postmortem doctor. So it is not so easy <clears throat> in case of medical legal cases because all this process takes time and you know that you need to collect the uh, tissues within six hours after death. Some, some, I, uh, the message which are being, which should, everyone should know each and every people in the company that I can be donated only after death. Then I must be removed within four to six hours after death. The corneas, eyeballs can be donated after cardiac as well as brain death. I can be removed by a trained technician or a registered medical practitioner. The eye bank team will visit the home of the disease or the hospital to remove the eyes. The eye removal does not delay the funeral since it takes 30 minutes only. A small quantity of blood is also taken uh, to, to actually rule out communicable disease. Eye retrieval does not cause disfigurement. So all this information is important for the common men so that they should be motivated enough to, to, to donate eyes of their keys. Otherwise, there are so many, so many restrictions are there in our country. People say that their religion do not permit, but all religions, they, they support eye donation. And <clears throat> um, it is, you must ensure that uh, the, 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 you must meet the near relative of the diseased person and uh, should get sign of the two uh, witnesses also while collecting the corneas. And this is very important, the contact number in case any person need to call in case of any death then the, the local number, this 1919 is a universal number for iBank and the call goes to nearest iBank. For National by iBank and RP Center, the number is 26593160. Whereas Noto, they also have given their number on their website and anybody can call at this number. This is totally free, of course. And number is 1800-114-770. Please remember these numbers. Then the next component which I would like to cover is the trachoma and, and the trachoma elimination strategies in our country. Trachoma, as you know, that the most important cause of infectious blindness globally. If we see trachoma in India in 1950s, 1959 to 63, the ICMR conducted a survey and you can see the prevalence of active disease, active trachoma <clears throat> was so high, it was more than 50% in, in the states in the uh, Northwest states, in Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Punjab, and Western UP, it was like so high. Uh, you can see in Haryana, it was 79%, Rajasthan, 74%. So such a high uh, prevalence was there. In 86, 89, as part of the National Blindness Survey, what we found that the prevalence was reduced significantly, but it was still higher than what, what we assume that, which is the uh, target for elimination of trachoma. 
in in 2006 uh, npcb they conducted rapid assessment trachoma survey to known as trs trachoma rapid assessment surveys and what we found is the burden was reduced significantly in our country but we need to further provide documentation to who um, that the trachoma is eliminated uh, car nicobar is one example in fact where i was one who visited in 2010 and we were shocked to see that nearly 51% children they had active trachoma active disease trachoma uh, follicles 51% children and a lot of people were blind due to trachoma so what we uh, propose is a mass azithromycin uh, to the entire population with three consecutive right probably this was the first time when a mass treatment with azithromycin was given in our country as part of and and, and again a safe strategy implementation in 2013 the prevalence was reduced to 6.8% from 51% to 6.8% and 2017 we did a final survey and we found that prevalence was further reduced to 1.6% so fisto classification is used for for any any survey for identification of active disease it is basically trachoma follicles or trachoma intense are seen and then we look for trachoma scarring and for for people above 15 year of age we look for trachomatous trichiasis and corneal opacity they are sequel basically the sequel of active disease <clears throat> then you must know what is the criteria for elimination of trachoma who goal is to eliminate trachoma by this year 2020 as part of get global elimination of trachoma program and uh, i'm you know it's really sorry to say that as far as cro countries are concerned all the countries they have declared trachoma elimination except india two year ago nepal they declared their trachoma elimination and this year in 2020 myanmar they declared trachoma elimination but in india it is still persisting um, you know when we say what is the elimination criteria it is basically divided into two group one is the uh, trachoma among children and second is a trachoma or trachomatous trichiasis in 15 plus age group in 15 plus age group the prevalence of trachomatous trichiasis should be less than 0.2% in each district whereas among children we look for active disease that is tf and ti and if the prevalence is less than 5% in each district and it is sustained for at least 2 years then we can say that it is eliminated and uh, we should also be able to show that there is a presence of health system which is able to identify and manage new trachomatous trichiasis cases so if you should have a like proper facilities for management trachoma in in your health system so the strategies which has been adopted globally uh, like uh, adopt uh, strategy which is accepted one globally it is basically safe strategy s a f e where s stand for surgery for sequelae of trachoma and that is basically entropion surgeries then antibiotic now it is a single dose with azithromycin and it's a 20 mg per kg body weight is given for adult it is single dose with 1 gram just a single dose of azithromycin is sufficient whereas previously we were giving tetracycline for nearly 6 months facial cleanliness and environmental improvement they are basically the health promotive approach <clears throat> which have been considered as very good for trachoma elimination so <clears throat> we did this national survey trachoma survey from 2014 to 2017 and uh, you'll surprise me more than 88000 people were examined and it was divided into two group one was a trachoma prevalence survey which you can see that the blue uh, districts are the trachoma prevalence survey district which were previously hyper endemic districts in northwest region of the country and that include 10 districts <clears throat> whereas trachoma rapid assessment surveys were conducted in other part of the country <clears throat> where we were expecting that trachoma may be there as a burden so we wanted to see whether it is still uh, some burden is there or not for in or rest rest of the country in each state we selected one district and we conducted rapid assessment surveys and now these are the result of this 2014-17 survey the prevalence of active disease among children it is 1 to 9 year of age it was just 
that means tf trachoma follicles and trachoma intense was just 0.7% and as i mentioned who declared it, it it is eliminated when the the prevalence is less than 5% <clears throat> so when we are getting it 0.7% we can easily say at least trachoma in children has been eliminated in our country so on 8 december 2017 at that time health minister of india he declared that trachoma among children has been eliminated <clears throat> whereas we look for prevalence of trachomatous striasis also and what we found is that the prevalence of tt in india was 3.5 per 1000 in 15 plus population and as you know the elimination criteria was much strict it was less than 2 per 1000 that means we were not able to declare tt elimination in our country at that time and that means more intensive efforts are required in fact tt prevalence was less than 2 per 1000 only in three state in gujarat in uttarakhand and haryana whereas it was prevalence was much higher in karnikobar in rajasthan in all three district of rajasthan dholpur tonk and bikaner where surveys were conducted in hoshiar district pur district of punjab as well as in east delhi and in as far as as part of rapid assessment also we found that in two places in himachal pradesh that is in unna and in sitapur up the burden was high the burden of tt was high so it was very clear as a part of the survey in 2014 and 17 trachoma in children has been eliminated but trachoma in 15 plus age group the trachomatous striasis some more efforts are required so we invited the, this who global expert who was in geneva geneva dr anthony solomon uh, who is heading the trachoma division who in in rp center uh, even the minister people from who sierra region and who india team were there and we had a detailed discussion for strategy to eliminate trachoma in our country and the first thing was we identified that there should be a task force the central task force and monitoring committee for trachoma elimination and these two task force were developed in our country the second component was to that should have a surveillance of trachoma in each and every district of our country we have nearly 735 district in our country and it has been recommended that every district should report every month to government of india about if any any trachoma active case or tt case have been uh, has been diagnosed in in that district that should be reported as part of this format and we are submitting this format to who on annual basis then it was identified like which district should be chosen for further work for trachomatous striasis and the who team suggested that Uh, we should work in all those districts which were previously hyper endemic so as per that data nearly 200 districts are previously hyper endemic so it has been decided that safe safe strategy should be should be uh, like implemented in all these districts we should find uh, the tt cases and free entropion surgery should be provided in all these 200 districts in the country so what we have done rp center and government of india npcb the training program have been conducted for national level for state level for district level you know up to chc and psc levels and it has been planned that uh, the tt only survey will be conducted in 200 districts so all these 200 district tt who want this much of information tt survey in all the districts 200 districts in our country in fact uh, very soon rp center will be starting these surveys and we need to prove that the prevalence of trachomatous striasis is less than 0.2% or less than 2 per 1000 in our country and based on this survey we will be submitting dossier to who for validation of trachoma trachoma elimination now probably by the end of 2021 or two because covid is there it may be 2022 also only then we will we can say the trachoma is eliminated in our country thank you thank you very much everyone uh, i think now uh, i request the admin team to to to, to discuss question thank now. you so much sir that was a very interesting lecture i i think like most of us uh, miss out on the information on uh, vision 2020 what everybody is doing for it 
sir, and uh, you being an integral part of Vision 2020, I think sir, a lot is going to progress further now. Thank so, you. sir, we'll take up some questions, sir, that have been yeah. asked on the uh, portals. So, uh, so I'm sure, sir, that uh, Vision 2020 has not been as an, as expected. Like being 2020, it was not really expected out of this year. But so we would like to know what um, mm -hmm. how COVID has affected the program, and what measures the team had to take to keep it going smoothly. You know, COVID has really affected the national program. In fact, when we talk about the national program, it is basically maximum emphasis given on cataract. Uh, number two, it is corneal blindness. And number three, it is basically refractive error. And, the, and after that, it is glaucoma and diaphragma. These, these, these are the common disease which is part of the national program. And I can tell you the, the number of cataract surgeries has reduced to less than 10% of what we are doing, 65 lakh surgeries in a year. Now only 10% of those have been done. As far as the corneal blindness is concerned, the government of India, they gave strict guidelines. That is no corneal retrieval at household level. Only, only hospital corneal retrieval program can be like uh, initiated or started uh, for, for, uh, for corneal retrieval. And in fact, that is only for therapeutic purpose. So you can understand, even till till last till uh, September, the 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 program related to corneal blindness keratoplasty was probably affected the most. And uh, in fact, uh, government of India is very considerate. They are giving regular guidelines. The first guidelines were given on the 8th of May. Then second guidelines were given on in September. In fact, uh, they are trying to relax the conditions, but all of us know that the situation is so difficult. So, so like in Delhi at this stage, we have the maximum burden of uh, uh, Corona um, cases. So uh, we are considerate. The government says that and this uh, COVID test is basically not mandatory for any surgeries, but probably most of the institutions, they are actually doing those tests before starting any surgery, though it is not mandatory. But we are hoping that uh, uh, the condition will improve, government will further relax it, uh, and then more and more surgery will be started. Can you believe in first guideline, they said no outreach programs, no outreach screening, but in second guidelines, they were very clear that outreach program should be initiated, should be started, and cataract surgery should be performed. So hope now they will further relax the conditions. Is it I'm sure okay? so that you yeah, I'm sure so that you're facing more difficulties than we can imagine. And thanks to you and to your team, sir, for uh, still taking care of all the factors. So, uh, so one more thing is that uh, sir, as you mentioned about HCRP, that hospital corner retrieval program. So it is currently stopped, sir, or is it uh, going on? You said it's being used therapeutically. As I mentioned, the government of India are recommending only HCRP. They said HCRP should be continued, but collection of corneas from home, that should be avoided. So HCRP they are promoting, and still we are collecting some corneas through HCRP. Right? <clears throat> okay, sir. Uh, so one of the panelists wants you to uh, emphasize uh, once again about uh, on the uh, vitamin A deficiency, uh, the profile axis and the treatment. If you could highlight that, sir. So there are two components. Profile axis is given to all the children uh, under five years of age. The first dose is given at nine months of age. Second dose at one and a half year of age. And then after, after six months, total nine doses. The dose is uh, one lakh unit or one ml before one year of age. And after one year of age, it is two lakh unit or two ml. As far as the treatment is concerned, treatment is given when you see sign or symptoms of vitamin A deficiency. And treatment is a three dose schedule, zero, one, and 14. Day zero, you give uh, again two lakh unit if it is a, age is more than one year and one lakh unit if age is less than one year. And then uh, day one and day 14. And after that, you need to continue with the profile axis, whatever the age is of the child is there. Right? Right, sir. So. Uh, so many of the PGs face a lot of difficulties while carrying out enucleation due to families hurrying up for funeral, as you also had mentioned, and even on religion basis. Mm -hmm. So would you give some counseling tips for them so that they can carry it out easily? 
see this is one scenario <clears throat> which we have seen that it is it is something very difficult uh, when especially even the team from the hospital they can't do it within one go it 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 needs a long long process actually and it is not that that counseling it is basically entire setup has to be changed the process the, the behavior of the people need to be changed and for that what we have found is using the religious leaders for for actually counseling or or guiding the people is probably maybe the most effective strategy um, this this is one in fact uh, Uh, it is very easy to say but it is very difficult to implement what we have observed even the religious leaders they are not keen there there are no cornea collection in entire kashmir this is something if you com- consider i'm saying in broad north india cornea collection is very low within south india the cornea collection is very good sri lanka is such a small country but they are exporting cornea to india so that is such a huge gap and probably will take some time the best strategy is to involve religious leader if they are motivated they can definitely motivate the community also right yes sir so uh, since you have mentioned sir countries so out of the sir countries are in vision 2020 which country has excelled the most and achieved the most and what do you think are the reasons behind it which country has achieved the most in the in most, what sense in in, which in, in terms of vision 2020 so like uh, to achieve the factors see as far as sierra countries are concerned uh, uh, this uh, vision 22 and try to site program uh, you know we are not much linked with other sierra countries i am mainly linked with the trachoma control program as who made me as the you know a member of a committee which actually scrutinized the uh, the dossier which has been submitted by nepal and myanmar so i reviewed their dossiers i know that both the countries have worked very hard especially nepal nepal conducted they have 75 districts they conducted rapid as the trachoma uh, uh, surveys among children as well as adults in all 75 districts such such huge work nepal as far as the prevalence of blindness is concerned that is quite close to the elimination criteria you know 0.3% is the elimination criteria nepal is quite close to that so nepal netra jyoti sangh is there they are very active they are working a lot in nepal as far as other sierra countries are concerned i can <clears throat> easily say that uh, uh, even even uh, uh, this bangladesh is doing quite good uh, sri lanka is definitely very good Uh, rest i am not in much in link with my uh, other countries i am not in touch but as far as trachoma is concerned it is very clear that india is 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 the weakest one other countries they have done their best right yes sir. yes sir so as we all know that surgical camps have a major role to play in providing services in the rural areas as well as for the surgical training of post graduates so how soon do you think that we can take back the camps now in such a scenario see as for the guidelines which were released by npcb in september they said that camps you know they are not using the word camp but they have used outreach screening program which yes. is same as camp actually they should be started patient should be examined and cataract patient should be should be asked to come to hospital for for cataract surgery so it is already been now uh, like uh, approved by government of india as per their guidelines and what we need is now the the respective institutes they have to take initiative in starting their program government is very clear that it should be started now right right uh, so one of the panelists here uh, is uh, requesting you to please highlight the treatment of trachoma again sir treatment for trachoma yes sir yeah actually trachoma treatment is given mainly for the active cases when we have tf and ti and the uh, nowadays what we are doing is we are giving single dose of azithromycin which is 20 mg per kg body weight so a child which is a 10 kg child you need to give 20 into 10 it is 2 uh, 200 mg of azithromycin 
for adults what we are doing we are giving 1 gram of azithromycin it is single dose only single dose only so whenever you see case of trachoma active trachoma you give single dose of azithromycin in case of infant if the age is less than 1 year of age at the, then we don't recommend uh, the treatment with the tablets of or syrup of uh, azithromycin we can give eye drop of azithromycin so that's a simple case so this is treatment for trachoma nowadays right right so uh, so how about the screening for refractive errors so uh, are uh, are we providing or is there a provision of uh, spectacle arrangement for the uh, poor at the phc centers see as far as uh, refraction services are concerned with all the uh, like uh, precautions for covid refraction should be conducted guidelines have been given by aios uh, specifically for uh, conducting refractions and basic precautions and do the refraction in fact rp center as well as our community outreach programs our 18 centers are currently functional and refraction services are being provided um, vision spring is one ngo which i would like to name that they have started this their outreach screening refractive error services very effectively uh, at least in delhi in east delhi they have started Uh, they are utilizing the covid uh, like uh, some awareness about covid also in those outreach programs they said their 30% spend time of time is spent on covid related uh, awareness and 70% on eye care activities probably this is the best way they have also developed manuals and precautions that to be taken while doing refraction or camp so probably that should be adopted and now what we need is that the thing should be normalized as early as possible and people should be doing refraction and other outreach programs in the community also this is the need at this stage in our country right okay, so uh, so one of the panelists would like to know that um, uh, what are the main measures being taken up in india in uh, for childhood corneal blindness see childhood corneal blindness as you can see the major causes can be uh, one is a vitamin a deficiency in measles you know that vitamin a prophylaxis program is there second is prevention of injuries probably you know that only basically you need to give uh, a proper uh, safety precautions for for people you know and 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 national program control of blindness they just talk about uh, like one component is vitamin a prophylaxis second component is basically providing facilities for treatment in case a child is required keratoplasty then government of india is giving 7500 rupees for 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 that this is one area that means treatment facilities are are available for secondary prevention some of the project have been initiated for treatment of corneal ulcers um, but that is not at the uh, community level mass level it is some only only few projects are there so to rest uh, i i it's difficult because just just talking about corneal blindness is difficult uh, the the program work comprehensively comprehensively for childhood blindness where corneal blindness is one of the component we talk about cataract we talk about refractive errors we talk about uh, uh, ropes other things are also more important beside corneal blindness right right sir uh, so one very interesting question is there that any special surveys are being planned of uh, after covid to reassess the burden of blindness in india because it, it we have to some, take all new measures such a question in fact i have been thinking about it like should we do another survey immediately after this uh, this covid and we can say that what is the you know we we finish our survey in 2019 so it is so easy to compare actually how covid has affected we know that cataract surgery perform and surgical rate which was 5000 in our country hi dr honover hello sir hi how are you all right Good. see you see the uh, cataract surgeries which we are performing nearly 65 lakh surgeries per year and now we believe in 2020 the number has reduced to hardly 10% of that that automatically means the burden of blindness is increased significantly 
तो सो इनफैक्ट इफ सम एजेंसी कैन स्पॉन्सर आवर टीम आर पी सेंटर विल बी वेरी हैप्पी टू डू सर्वे काइंड ऑफ सर्वे विच विल गिव अस एक्चुअल इम्फेसिस वट इज द बर्डन ऑफ ब्लाइंडनेस ड्यू टू covid that kind that thing can be assessed we'll be very happy to do the survey in rp center we have started one study itself with the help of dst we were doing a project we were looking for a role of uh, outreach uh, activities in relation to myopia like the time spent outside and the burden of myopia and luckily we got this information due, due to covid the child the children they are restricted to their home only they are not going out <laughs> so we have collected information how much time currently they have to spend they are spending at home and uh, outside and the, we can easily compare the two datas and we'll be submitting report to dst once we if we can do their pre- myopia prevalence also we did before covid also and if we can do it after covid then we can easily see the effect of uh, covid on myopia prevalence that that study is already there so blindness burden especially especially the, the cataract burden because we know the cataract is nearly 20% is the incidence of cataract in our country every year so if you are not performing surgery in one year you may assume that there will be increase in 20% of blindness due to cataract this is assumption we can easily prove this if we do study after covid so i am very keen to this do this such, such kind of studies to see the effect of covid in our country we we need some kind of uh, some kind of funding from some agency maybe npcb maybe dr santosh can help in this <laughs> <laughs> yes so so that yeah. takes us to the next question uh, uh, that a, a panelist has asked is that what is the future plan for treating the backup of the cataract cases like what plans do you have in mind of how to cover up that yeah, that's an important question such a uh, you know difficult situation in our country what is the plan in fact uh, i think uh, let me share this thing in fact government of india is also planning for this thing through the prime minister funds relief funds they are getting funding for probably for trachoma elimination if everything go well there will be a huge program for next 5 years for uh, targeting Uh, cataract backlog elimination in our country and based on the national survey what information we have given to government of india that if we really need to eliminate cataract blindness and visual impairment we need to do around 1.14 crore surgery 11.5 million surgeries per year the current number of surgeries are nearly 6.5 million so nearly surgeries are required at least at least to eliminate cataract uh, uh, you know the the blindness or or to to eliminate the backlog of cataract so so the such plan is there in fact for remote areas i suggest the best strategy is if we can perform this uh, uh, services through you know that was some uh, train were there and they were going to um, to remote areas and providing outreach cataract surgical service so you can have ot in in, in train and then they can provide outreach cataract surgical service such like a program may be started it is called lifeline express ha ji lifeline lifeline express such kind of program especially in remote districts that is the need of the hour and we hope that uh, government of india will 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 start such kind of activities especially for remote areas. right sir right so thank you so much sir for answering all our questions mm-hmm. and for orienting us about the uh, current vision 2020 program sir and the corner blindness in india thank you so much thank sir you. Thank, thank you so thank much you, sir. very important thank topic you. thank you so much for very nice thank you for the opportunity to present actually i, I feel relaxed you know i'm happy to answer all the questions it is really nice that something related to community of ophthalmology is being dis- discussed with the student thank you dr santosh for taking such initiative i am really yeah. really very happy thank you sir and i am available for any kind of such program in future also thank you so much right thank Good you time. sir thank you. thank you thank you thank you sir